Hello students, in this video we are going to learn about the layout of SRAM. In previous video we saw about the read and write circuitry of SRAM by using the stability criteria of read and write operations in SRAM. Now we'll be learning of how to draw the layout of SRAM. You know, my previous video I explained you clearly. So, so far we have completed about the SRAM read and write circuits, design strategies and the leakage current that is happening in your SRAM. So with all this, the SRAM part has been completed. So once this SRAM part is completed, we must know how to draw the layout of SRAM as well. So here we'll be seeing about the same six transistor design style. For the six transistor SRAM, we are going to draw the layout. So what is the six transistor SRAM? We have two cross coupled inverters followed by two access transistor and there is a word line and two bit lines. So bit line and bit line bar will be pre-charged by using a separate pre-charge circuitry. But as of now, we are not going to draw the layout of your pre-charge circuit or read circuit or write circuit. Just we are going to draw the layout for only the six transistor SRAM methodology. Now you see, this is the six transistor SRAM's uh, layout. Don't panic. It is so simpler. See if you remember uh, N, diffusion will be given with a green color whereas a p diffusion must be given with yellow color and blue color stands for a metal and some other variation of blue is for the second type of metal and polysilicon is given with red color and wherever you have a contact give it a black color Right. So now in our six transistor model, we have a word line, bit line, and how many transistors? Six transistors. So six transistor together with a word line, bit line, and VDD and ground as well. Now see what is this? I have just drawn the circuit diagram as well as your layout side by side so that it will be easy for you to understand what actually I have drawn. See the circuit. There are two bit lines, right? Bit line and bit line bar. So here there is it is represented with two color, which is bit line, and here again a bit line bar. And I have a word line, right? I have a word line. Don't think that bit, bit line and word line is connected. It is not connected. When it will be connected? Only when there is a black color line, it is connected. I just diffused. It means that I'm going to diffuse a bit line here and bit line over here and word lines. Okay. So a word line and two bit line has been drawn. Again, what I have to do? I have to draw a six transistor. So if I have to draw a six transistor, before that we usually draw a VDD. Right, draw first VDD and then a ground. Okay, this is a VDD connection, blue color in between, which is running. And again, one more is your ground. So my VDD and the ground part is completed. Bit lines are completed. My word line is completed. Again, how many transistors I have to draw? One, two, three, and four. First, we will complete the four transistors, which is two inverter part. So how many P MOSFETs are there? Two. So how many diffusion I have to do? I'll just do a single diffusion, which is yellow color. Diffusion is being diffused. So how a transistor can be formed? When a polysilicon crosses a diffusion, a transistor will be formed. So now this red color is polysilicon. This red color polysilicon is crossing your diffusion how many times? Two times because I have two transistors. So one is P2, one more is P1. Again, what is it? We have a N MOSFETs. How many N MOSFETs are there? There are four N MOSFETs. So I can clearly easily say there must be four polysilicon crossing. So see here, which is one, two, three, and four polysilicon is crossing my diffusion. So there are four transistors that has been formed. Now I'm not bothering about my access transistor, which are on the outside. Now the diffusion, which is on the inside is Two transistor. See here, my P1 and N1 gate are connected. That, that is why 
both the polysilicon of n diffusion and p diffusion is connected so which means my p1 and n1 is being completed now again p2 and n2 so the gate of p2 and n2 must be shorter so here the gate of my n diffused p2 as well as your n2 is shorter so a polysilicon has been drawn directly by connecting my n diffusion and p diffusion and then what is this my input must be given as output and output must be given as input and now the two terminals the remaining terminal is there right one is connected to vdd one more is connected to ground one is connected to gate and what is this the input must be connected to output and output must be connected to input so now the remaining part of my transistor gate has been connected by using a polysilicon that is red color so red color is completed and again this this source part and drain part drain part and source part of p mosfet and n mosfet has to be connected that is connected by using a metal blue color in the same way here also source and drain of two transistors are connected so my inputs are there my outputs are there so one this is an output that is connected as an input again an output which is connected as an input is it clear so now a simple connection has been made wherever the connection is there i have given a black color which is means a contact is there and then now i'm going to draw the two access transistors what are the two access transistor n3 as well as your n4 so n3 and n4 are p diff n diffusion so it is being connected to a polysilicon so here n3 and n4 so i'm making a connection which is given to the metal line so thereby the connection or the layout of your stm has been completed a simple methodology you just check for the number of polysilicon there are four polysilicon that is touching two times your n diffusion four times your n diffusion and two times your p diffusion there is a six transistor methodology and this is six transistor layout design thank you